Okay, this is John from tcmathacademy.com, and what we want to do here is to determine whether this statement is true or false. So is this true? Well, what are we dealing with? Well, we're dealing with percent, and really what we're saying is is 2% of 9% of n. Okay, now n represents a number. So 9% of n, 2% of 9% of n, is this the same thing as 18% of n? Again, n represents a number, and if we look here, 2 and 9, 2 times 9 is, of course, 18. So maybe this is true, but maybe it isn't. So if you could figure this problem out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one second. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to it in the description below. And by the way, if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer here. Now, if you're not ready to see it, just pause the video and work on it for a little bit longer. But let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. The answer is, this is not true. Now, there's a couple different uh, paths you could take to determine uh, this, uh, um, whether this is a valid or invalid statement, the easiest way is just to substitute a number for n and use your calculator and just kind of see if this thing works out. So if you did that or if you used another technique to determine whether this was valid or not, well, let's go ahead and celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face in A plus a 100% and multiple stars so you can tell your friends and family that you know a thing or two about percent. That's pretty awesome. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this. So. Um, obviously, we know that this is not true, and the easiest way to, uh, to, uh, to determine whether something is true in math or not is just to uh, basically plug in a value for this variable and just kind of work out the numbers and see if it actually lines up. So basically, 2% of 9% of n, let's let n equal to 100, okay? So we'll replace this n with, the, uh, with 100. We'll do this math over here. And we'll, uh, again, we'll do this math on this side of the equation, we'll, and we'll let n equal to 100 on this side. And we'll just kind of just see, hey, does this left-hand side equal to the right-hand side? If it does, well, that means that this is a true statement. If it does not, it, does, it means that this is a false statement. So let's go ahead and just uh, do that right now. This is a simple way to determine whether something is... Um, Anytime you're trying to determine something is true in mathematics, oftentimes you can easily plug in a number and just kind of test it. Now, of course, you have to make sure you do the math correctly. So let's go ahead and do this now. So we have 2% of 9% of n, and n we're going to let equal to 100. So first we have to find 9% of 100. So 2% of 9% of 100, 9% of 100 is 9. So that's going to be 0 0.09 times 100, okay? So if you don't know how to do this, well, then you need to kind of review some basic uh, percent. But 9% of 100 is, uh, now you should just be able to look at this, be like, well, if you have 100 and you have 9% of 100, that is 9. Because uh, by definition, percent, the definition of percent is expressing a number out of uh, 100. Okay, so in other words, we're comparing it a number to 100. So 9 out of 100 is 9%. So hopefully you know a thing or two about percent, but if you didn't and you have your calculator, you could have taken this percent here, changed it into a decimal that would be 0 0.09 and then multiply by 100 and you would have gotten 9. Okay, so 2% of 9, we have to figure that out now. So 2% of 9, now in our calculator here, we're going to change this percent to a decimal. That's 0 0.02 times 9. Now, if you're a little bit shaky on percent, um, you know, if you're like, oh yeah, I kind of forgot that. Well, they need to kind of do some review. Let me offer you a couple of quick suggestions. When I have a ton of videos on my YouTube channel, I'll present various type of percent problems and, and uh, skills that you need to know. Or you can check out my Math Foundations course or pre-algebra course. You can find that at my Math Help program. All right, so 2% we can write as 0 0.02, and then we'll multiply that by 9. Of course, we'll use our calculator, make our life a little bit easier. So that is 0.18. So this whole left-hand side right here, when we replace this n with 100, turned out to be 0.18. So now we're going to replace this n with 100, and we're going to see whether, in fact, that is equal to 0.18 or not. Okay, so 18% of 
n. This is what we're trying to figure out. So when we're trying to find a percent of a number, uh, basically we kind of interpret this as uh, this way, 18% of n. So if n is 100, we want to find 18% of 100. So we're going to, again, change 18% uh, into a decimal, that's 0.18, times 100, which would be 18. Of course, hopefully, uh, you don't even need a calculator to find or to express or to find out what 18% of 100 is, because 18 out of 100 is equal to 18%. Okay, so 18% uh, of 100 is 18. Now, that doesn't uh, appear to uh, be equal to the left-hand side. So again, when we actually, uh, give me one second here. So the right-hand side turned out to be equal to 18, and the left-hand side turned out to be 0.18. So these are not equal. All right, kind of jumped the gun there uh, because I just wanted to show you that we determine this was the left-hand side when we let n equal to 100. It's 0.18, and the right-hand side is equal to 18. These are obviously not equal, so this statement here is not true. Okay, so in mathematics, we could just simply put a little line. No, this is not true. So let's go ahead and take a look at this algebraically. Now, let's suppose we don't want to let a number, uh, let replace n with a number. No big deal. We could still just kind of use some basic algebra uh, to uh, determine whether this is uh, correct or not. So 9% of n, how can we write that using algebra? Well, we'll just change that 9% to a decimal, so that would be 0 0.09. So 9% of n is 0 0.09 times n. Okay, so we can see that there. So if I want to find 2% of the result of 9% of n, that would be 0 0.02 times 0 0.09n. Okay, so when we use our calculator, 0 0.02 times 0 0.09, well, hope, you know, hopefully some of you out there, you know, can still multiply decimals, but feel free to use a calculator. Um, that's not... The point here is not a pra it's not for you to practice, you know, uh, operations with decimals. So again, use a calculator, make your life easier. So 0 0.02 times 0 0.09 is 0 0 0.0018n. Excuse me. That's what the left hand side is equal to. And then 18% of n. How do we express that? Um, you know, in another way, well, we could change that percent to a decimal. So that would be 0.18n. And here again, 0.18n is not the same thing as 0.0018n. So these are not equal. All right. So this is just kind of an exercise in determining whether something is true or not. Okay. And there's a lot of different applications for this. Uh, one, you might have a question like this on a test or a quiz or an exam. That's one way. But when you can figure problems out like this, that really shows you have a good, solid understanding of the relevant things, you know, um, that are involved in the problem. Okay, like you really have a command of the concepts. In this case, we're dealing with percent, and percent is a must-know uh, uh, practical math skill. Everybody needs to know how, um, a lot about percent, not just how to take how to uh, find a percent of a number. You want to know how to solve a variety of different type of percent problems, and oftentimes it does require algebra. For the most part, okay, there are some other ways to get around using algebra to solve percent problems, but I'm going to strongly suggest that you brush up on your basic algebra skills uh, when you are solving a little bit more interesting percent problems. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.